Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Three Months of Modal Logics. A sequel to the 100 Days of Logic, or a Logic 201. In this video, we're going to be looking at deontic definitions. We're going to be continuing our October focus on deontic logic, looking at some of the definitions to some of the deontic terms we learned about in the last video. So, all of our deontic terms that we learned about in the last video, obligatory, impermissible, permissible, and omissible, and optional, can be defined in terms of any of the first four terms. They can't be defined in terms of optional for a number of reasons. Following Paul McNamara and his SEP article, we're going to define these terms in terms of obligatory and have that be kind of our central term we're looking at. So we're going to define impermissible that P. It's not allowed that P as it's obligatory that not P. That makes sense. If something is not allowed, it means that you ought to not do it. So, if something is impermissible, it's obligatory that you not do that thing. Permissible, we're going to define as it's not the case it's obligatory that not P. So, permissible, that P, if something is allowed, it's okay to do. That means it's not the case that it's impermissible, or it's not the case that it's obligatory that you don't do that thing. Omissible that P, we're going to define as it's not the case that it's obligatory that P. Basically, if something is omissible, you don't have to do it, that means it's not the case that you have to do it, that you're obliged to do it. And finally, we're going to define optional that P as it's not the case that it's obligatory that P, and it's not the case that it's obligatory that not P. Okay? If I use any of these definitions in a proof, I will refer to them as DED for deontic definitions. Now, these may seem like you're learning something completely new and you don't have any access to them before. You haven't seen something like this before, but you should take a look at not only kind of the modal logic definitions of possibility and necessity, but also some of the ideas that are referenced in categorical logic in that series if you want kind of a grounding point or a way to understand these. As we move forward in this series, we're going to talk about those relations between deontic logic and categorical logic, as well as the relations between deontic logic and alethic modal logic. But if you want to get a head start, check out the way that these definitions relate to those. Up next, we're going to be looking at the deontic trifold classification once again, this is just kind of a way to parse out or understand these different distinctions. Watch a new video every single day, once again, for a hundred days here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.